This is a flex column, sometimes called an econo column. This is a stopcock. This has three positions. It will attach to the bottom of the column, screw tight. This lid, similarly, will attach to the top of the column, and again, quarter turn, tight. These columns can be clamped to a burette clamp fairly easily. This is a plastic pipette of which I've cut the end off with scissors. So that's a sawed off pipette. The, the opening is now a wider diameter, which will be good for transferring this gel into the column. To load my gel, I'll first swirl my gel to get it suspended, and then I'll take my sawed off pipette and add to the column. So I'll start with two pipettefuls and then I'll see what I have. So right now material is dripping out the bottom of the stopcock, which is fine, and the gel will settle into the column. You can see a little bit of clear liquid on the top of the gel, that's good. I think I'll actually turn off the stopcock now and let the gel fully settle before I start draining it anymore. So here you can clearly see there's a layer of clear liquid on top. This looks good. I'm equilibrating the column with 30 millimolar tris pH 8.0 and you can see I can add a large volume on the top here and just let it wash through. My column is now ready to load with a sample. I've washed it with about 20 mils of the Tris buffer to equilibrate it. My sample in this case is a solution of hemoglobin, which is a red protein from blood. I'm loading about half a milliliter onto my column. So I'm using a Pasteur pipette. I want to gently drip the protein solution on top of the column. Trying not to disturb the gel bed. Down below, I have tubes set up to collect fractions. So each fraction should be about one milliliter in volume. And that'll be several drops, maybe about 10 drops. You can see the colored proteins are starting to go into the gel bed here. I'm expecting these proteins to bind to the column because at the pH of this buffer these proteins will be negatively charged and this is an anion exchange resin. So now the protein solution has all gone into the column, into the gel bed. I'm now adding my wash buffer, the same buffer I used to equilibrate the column and again I'm gently adding on the top trying not to disturb the gel bed alright and I'll let that flow in So you can see here the protein appears to be concentrated at the top of the gel bed. I disturbed it a little bit here with my pipette, so I've got a little divot there which is undesirable, but I think it'll be alright here. I'm looking now to see whether the protein will flow with just this no salt buffer. I'm hoping that all the protein will remain tightly bound to the column. Here I've got at least a milliliter in my first fraction. I should go to the next tube. I just do that by moving the test tube rack over. Start collecting drips in that second tube. I'm now adding about four milliliters of solvent, the no salt buffer. And if I have this column with a higher volume of buffer, 
it's easier to run. I don't have to worry about disturbing the gel bed if I'm adding buffer way up high like this. All right, so that should be enough for four or five fractions. And after I'm done with this no salt buffer, then I'll go to a buffer that has salt in it. Ready to change to the next tube. Here's a visual representation of my elution profile. You can see these do not have any hemoglobin, but then these colorful fractions here have hemoglobin. This is my peak hemoglobin fraction right here.